This video is about exponential functions and their graphs. An exponential function is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals a times b to the x, where a and b are any real numbers as long as a is not zero and b is positive. It's important to notice that for an exponential function, the variable x is in the exponent. This is different from many other functions we've seen. For example, quad a quadratic function like f of x equals 3x squared has the variable in the base, so it's not an exponential function. For exponential functions, f of x equals a times b to the x, we require that a is not equal to zero because otherwise we would have f of x equals zero times b to the x, which just means that f of x equals zero, and this is called a constant function, not an exponential function, because f of x is always equal to zero. In an exponential function, we require that b is bigger than zero because otherwise, for example, if b is equal to negative one, say, we'd have f of x equals a times negative one to the x. Now this would make sense for a lot of values of x, but if we tried to do something like f of one half with our b's negative one, that would be the same thing as a times the square root of negative one, which is not a real number. We'd get the same problem for other values of b if the values of b were negative. And if we tried b equals zero, we'd get a kind of ridiculous thing, a times zero to the x, which again is always zero. So that wouldn't count as an exponential either. So we can't use any negative bases and we can't use zero bases if we want an exponential function. The number a in the expression f of x equals a times b to the x is called the initial value. And the number b is called the base. The phrase initial value comes from the fact that if we plug in x equals zero, we get a times b to the zero. Well, anything to the zero is just one, so this is equal to a. In other words, f of zero equals a, so if we think of starting out when x equals zero, we get the y value of a. That's why it's called the initial value. Let's start out with this example, where y equals a times b to the x, an exponential function, and we've set a equal to one and b equals to two. Notice that the y-intercept, the value when x is zero, is gonna be one. If I change my a value, my initial value, the y-intercept changes. The function is stretched out. If I make the value of a go to zero and then negative, then my initial value becomes negative and my graph flips across the x-axis. Let's go back to an a value of, say, one and see what happens when we change b. Right now, the b value, the base is two. If I increase b, my y-intercept sticks at one, but my graph becomes steeper and steeper. If I put b back down close to one, my graph becomes more flat. At exactly one, my graph is just a constant. As b gets into fractional territory, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, my graph starts to slope the other way. It's decreasing now instead of increasing. But notice that the y-intercept still hasn't changed. I can get it more and more steep as my b gets farther and farther away from one. Of course, when b goes to negative territory, my graph doesn't make any sense. So a, changes the y-intercept, and b changes the steepness of the graph so that it's, and whether it's increasing for b values bigger than one, and decreasing for values of b less than one. We'll summarize all these observations on the next slide. We've seen that for an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x, the parameter, or number, 
A gives the y-intercept. The parameter B tells us how the graph is increasing or decreasing. Specifically, if B is greater than 1, the graph is increasing. And if B is less than 1, the graph is decreasing. The closer B is to the number 1, the flatter the graph. So for example, if I were to graph y equals 0.25 to the x and y equals 0.4 to the x, they would both be decreasing graphs since the base for both of them is less than 1, but 0.25 is farther away from 1 and 0.4 is closer to 1, so 0.4 is going to be flatter and 0.25 is going to be more steep. So in this picture, this red graph would correspond to 0.25 to the x, and the blue graph would correspond to 0.4 to the x. For all these exponential functions, whether the graphs are decreasing or increasing, they all have a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, in other words, at the line y equals 0. The domain is always from negative infinity to infinity, and the range is always from 0 to infinity, because the range is always positive y values. Actually, that's true if a is greater than 0. If a is less than 0, then our graph flips over the x-axis. Our domain stays the same, but our range becomes negative infinity to 0. The most famous exponential function is f of x equals e to the x. This function is also sometimes written as f of x equals x of x. The number e is Euler's number, and it's approximately 2.7. This function has important applications to calculus and to some compound interest problems. In this video, we looked at exponential functions, functions of the form a times b to the x, where the variable is in the exponent. We saw that they all have the same general shape, either increasing like this or decreasing like this, unless a is negative, in which case they flip over the x-axis. They all have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, the x-axis.